All right, 4C. Um, well, that looks short. How bad can it be? So let me write this down while the projector warms up. So A or B, C and D, A implies not C, and we're trying to prove B? Yes. Okay, so how are you tackling this? Um, well, I started the direct and progress proof, and I feel like I keep losing circles. Um, and I'm wondering if it's supposed to be C and D? I think C and D works, which okay. means the D is a red herring, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't show up anywhere. So from this, we're probably going to use the fact that C has to be true. because D doesn't do us any good. So if we know C is true, what can we do with one of these other statements? Wait, if, can we use that as our logic So we know, I'm, I'm kind of doing a mix of logic and intuition here. Mm -hmm. So we know C and D is true, right? We're yeah. picking on that one because we've got a D here that doesn't go with anything else. So this is probably significant. And probably the significant part from C and D is that C must be true. What, um, for the, um, count, what, uh, what would we for So this is a hypothesis. Conjunctive simplification. Does that help? Okay. <laughs> and then once you got C, you can throw contrapositive and say A is false, so B has to be true. That was C on part question four. So what about an indirect proof on that one? All right, so assume not B. That's an assumption. So A has to be true because A or false. So that gives you not C, right? Direct reasoning. And so we have C and D, and since not C is true, C is false, so we have false and D, which is just false, and so we prove that false is true. And our conclusion is this assumption must be invalid. So not always, but Typically, one direction is easier than the other. The direct proof may be really long and confusing, and in those cases, sometimes the indirect proof is really quick, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Sorry? That happens. So other questions? All right, go ahead and turn in your homework. I'll grade something from there.
I do not. There should be one. Oh, there's one there. Alright, got everybody's homework? Alright, um, let's play with some more proofs. So there were some extra ones on, um, Let me work through one of these, and then I'm going to have you do some others on the board. And then we'll switch gears to number theory. And with number theory, I think I'm unflipping the class for the rest of the week. The first lecture is already posted. We'll possibly get to it today. If not today, then Wednesday. But the first uh, lecture talks about divisibility. And go ahead and watch that and think about the homework questions. We'll work on those. Um, but I'm trying to shorten these videos to about five minutes total and so I'm thinking if it's going to be a five minute video I can just do that in class there's no reason you have to watch it ahead of time so I might try that for the rest of the week and see what happens this is an experiment so I'm trying to find a sweet spot so so for lecture nine which is divisibility go ahead and and watch that on your own you probably already did do the quiz which I think was due today um, and, and we'll work on those on the board, but then I might lecture on Wednesday on the next uh, topic, which is modular arithmetic, and then have you go to the board and do problems. So we'll see, but so there probably won't be other videos this week. Um, all right, so let's, lo let's look at proofs. Um, a lot of our proofs deal with even and odd numbers. It's a handy topic, right? So let me remind you of the definition. <coughs> so an integer, n is even if there exists some integer k in z such that n equals 2 times k. Okay, n is odd if there exists an integer k such that n equals 2k plus 1. So if you give me an integer n and you tell me n is even, I'm totally allowed to do this. Let n equal 2 times k, where k is an integer. Why am I allowed to do that? Because you told me n was even. And the definition of even means there is some integer k such that n equals 2 times k. So as soon as you hand me an integer and say this is even, I can say, OK, I'm going to let n equal 2 times k, where k is an integer. Now suppose you hand me another integer, m, and you tell me m is even. That means that there is some integer k such that n is equal to 2 times m, 2 times k. But I'm not going to write this. Because if I say m equals 2k, I'm forcing m to be equal to n. So don't write that. Say let m equal 2 times j where j is an integer. That's valid, right? Since you told me m was even, it's twice some integer. So I'm going to say, well, there's some j in z such that m is 2j. 
but don't, don't, don't use the same variable here as you do here unless you intend for n and m to be exactly equal to each other. Okay? This always costs people points on exams, so I'm gonna like nail this like first thing. Okay? Think very carefully about what you're writing. If you say n equals 2k, m equals 2k, w equals 2k, j equals 2k, right? You just said all those things equal to each other and your proof will become kind of, of nonsensical. All right, so we can always do this, right? We can, um, am I recording? Because I want that on film, yeah. Um, so we can always do this. Okay, so here's a typical, even odd problem. Um, prove that if n is even, then n squared is even. So the square of an even number is even. It makes sense. 2 squared is 4, 10 squared is 100, negative 6 squared is 36. All of those things are even numbers, right? So how do we prove this? Um, we're going to assume this, and we're going to try to show that. We're going to assume n is even, and we're going to try to prove n squared is even. And the only thing we know is that if a number is even, it can be written as twice an integer. So over here, we're going to write n as twice an integer, and then we're going to try to show that n squared can also be written as twice some integer, probably a different integer. Okay, there's no real wiggle room there. That's really just kind of working with the definitions. But how we show that from the former that's a creative leap, right? So um, my proof is going to look something like this. So suppose n is even. Let n equal 2 times k, where k is an integer. And now we want to show something about n squared. So we'll do some algebra. n squared equals 2k squared equals 4 times k squared. And we want to show n squared is even, so we want to show n squared is 2 times some integer. Can we do that? Say again? K squared is still, k squared is still an integer. Is that twice an integer? It's two times the quantity 2k squared, and 2k squared is an integer. How do we know that? Wave your hands and say properties of integers or something like that, right? We have to, we have to believe that if you take an integer, a whole number, and you square it, you still get a whole number, and if you double it, you still get a whole number, right? So my reason here would be like algebra and properties of integers. But now we've shown something glorious. We've shown that n squared is 2 times something where that something is an integer, right? Well, there exists an integer such that this quantity n squared is twice that integer. Therefore, n squared is even. And that's the end of your proof. The goal is that this is very rigorous. You never have to say something like, well, if you just kind of think about it, you can see it, right? That's the intuition you're looking for inside, right? That's the first part and often the biggest part of these proofs. The second part is being able to put it into a logical argument, right? So there's really two things, two problems going on with each of these. The first is sort of seeing why it's true and then the second is formalizing it. And with practice, the formalizing part becomes very straightforward. You just get used to the different rules of logic you use. With enough practice, that first part becomes more straightforward, that intuition, intuition, the, the sense of why this is true, right? But that's inherently, I think, the most difficult part. Okay, so this is typical of, of one set of proofs. The other one, this is a direct proof, right? We started with this. 
and we eventually showed the conclusion. So let's see an example of an indirect proof. Prove that if n squared is even, then n is even. And this is not the same as what we just did. We just proved start with an even number, square it, you get something even. But now I'm saying start with an even number that is a square of something, prove that that something is also even. So we know 4 squared is going to be even, we know that 10 squared is going to be even. But if I say 36 is even and is a square, do we know that the square root of that is even? So that's what we want to prove here. And if we try to do a direct proof, we may run into some dissatisfaction. So suppose n squared is even. So we assume the hypothesis. So n squared equals 2 times k, where k is an integer. And so n equals the square root of 2k which is the square root of 2 times the square root of k. And we want to show that this is twice times some integer. And suddenly we got a square root kicking around in there. And we got square root of 2, which isn't even rational, let alone an integer. And this just kind of takes you down a quagmire, right? So we're not really sure that this is going to be productive. So let's try an indirect proof. So an indirect proof will assume that this is false and we'll find a contradiction. So suppose n squared is even and n is not even. And we're going to try to find a contradiction. Well, if n is not even, what is it? It's odd. Which means it's twice some integer plus 1. So n can be written as 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. That's our definition. And, well, let's go ahead and square that. So it's 2k plus 1 squared, which is 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And I'm looking for a contradiction. And I've got n squared written as something that doesn't look like twice an integer. But we know that n squared is supposed to be even, so this might be where a contradiction can come in. n squared is even, but n squared is also 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. To me, this is an odd number. Because I know 4 times something is even, 4 times something is even, and an even plus an even plus an odd is odd. Well, I know that because I've done this before. But, um, but let's make this rigorous. Let's factor out a 2 from these first two terms. And we can write it like that. And then properties of integers, this thing in parentheses, is an integer. And bingo, we just wrote n squared as twice an integer plus 1. What does that make n squared? Makes it odd. Therefore, n squared is odd. But we started off with n squared is even. We just reached a contradiction. So I write contradictions like this, like a sideways number sign. I don't know why. So that's a contradiction. And therefore, this is a false statement, and so n is even. And that's what you wanted to show. So direct or indirect, usually one of them will work. 
So when you're asked to do a proof, usually the first thing I do is I, I try some examples, right? So I would look at some squares that are even and convince myself that n seems to be even in all cases. And, and once you believe that it's plausible, then you start thinking about reasons, right? And you jump into a proof. Um, all right, so let's have you try this. Okay, so prove that if n is odd, then n squared plus 3n is even. So I'll hit the lights. Go ahead and find a group and explore this. See if you can come up with a proof on the board. Yeah. 
You can't treat that as a premise. That's what you're trying to show. Right? We can assume the hypothesis that we're trying to, we're trying to show if P then Q. So you can assume P. You can't assume Q. You're trying to prove that. All right. So n equals 2k plus 1. That's the definition of n being odd. And then n squared plus 3n equals 2j. So what's the reason for that? Okay, so you don't want to do that. And you start. Yeah. Yeah. So go back to step four and go in. To show that it's equal to two k. Right, don't, don't say equal to two j up here. But you can do something else with n squared plus three n. All right. N equals two k plus one. Substituted it. Expanded it. And then we set this into our variable j. And then two times, we know this is an integer, so two times an integer is going to be even, so we know j is even. Okay. And then we set j plus 2, so we're adding an even number to an even number. Okay. We know it's going to be even. All right. So a few things. First of all, we don't necessarily know that adding two evens gives you an even. It doesn't. It does, but we probably have to prove that. Um, so that's one thing, but hold that. Um, so what is n? First thi line of your proof says n equals 2k plus 1. What is n? Okay, so you probably want to say n is an odd number before that line. Okay, and what's the reason for that? That's that's the hypothesis, right? So you can always assume the hypothesis. Okay, and then n equals two k plus one. What's the reason for that? Two k plus one is an odd number. That's true, but that's not why n is odd. Because we're saying here that you can write n as two k plus one. And 17 is an odd number, but I can't say n equals 17, right? Well, we're saying n is equal to 2 times some integer. Right, and why can we say that? Uh, That's just the definition of an odd number, right? <laughs> so, so we've been told if n is odd, we can write it as 2k plus 1. Yeah. Right, so the reason for that second line is that's the definition of what it means to say n is odd. Okay, so that's the reason for that. Okay, so the third line, 2k plus 1 squared plus 3 times 2k plus 1, is that a proposition? Well, we're supposed to find that this is even. Okay. So we know that n is an odd number, so we substitute our odd number in for n. So is 2k plus 1 a proposition? No. Okay, neither is 2k plus 1 squared plus 3 times 2k plus 1. It's not a declarative statement. There's no truth value for 2k plus 1 squared plus 3 times 2k plus 1. It's just a, an algebraic expression. So how can we make that into a proposition? Um, almost. Um, so where did this come from? How'd you, how'd you get that? That. So it's the same thing as that? Yeah. Okay, so now you're making a claim. Invisible ink. That this is true, that's a proposition. Yeah. Right? That's a declarative statement, it has a truth value. But it's supposed to be So this is a valid part of a proof, right? But if you just do this, it's no longer a proposition. Okay. So you can say n squared plus three n equals this. And you can say that that's equal to this by expanding, and that's equal to this by simplifying. And that's equal to this with the properties of integers. Well, this is 
And so this is equal to Okay. Um, but you, okay, okay, and then you got the J plus two. Okay, with the possible question of even plus an even and even. But what if you had written this as let's see. Where'd the plus two come from? Uh, because I took a two out of all this and this would be two times two k squared mm -hmm. plus five k. And I took a two out of four. Okay. Um, so it looks like this is the same as this. Oh wait, oh wait yeah, where did yeah. I put that there? <laughs> all right. So that's equal to j, um, right, which is twice an integer. Yeah. So therefore, n squared plus three n is even. Yeah. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so try the other one. Prove that 10 squared is odd, then n is odd. I'll come back. This work out. So you're doing the first one? Yeah. Okay, n is odd, prove n squared. Okay, so where does your proof begin? Right there. Yes. 
and then you're observing the two J's, the event and the dead, or you're going to see it. Okay. So you got all the right mechanics in here, right? Okay. It's just making sure we have the proper position. Yeah, this is how we leave today. We'll sell it all three of them. All right. Oh, you write another three. Yeah, I'm going to say. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> right there. So, N equals 2K plus 1. Okay, that first line here. Uh, I don't think we want to say. Uh, okay. I'm not going to. Uh, I don't know what N is. I don't know what we're doing. Let's do it. But it's it's okay, plus one, one squared is the same. Okay, so you're assuming n is odd? Small family. Oh, okay. So that's okay. Yeah. 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 Or maybe a real right. Yeah. 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 So you're actually the converse. So start off with n is odd. Sorry, n squared is odd. Let's see if you can get to n is odd. Move n squared. Okay, yeah, that's your hypothesis in particular. Um, so n is 2k plus 1 is the definition of odd. Okay, now how do you know that n is odd? That's the other one right there. So it's an eight or two of these are just terrible. <laughs> well, we're, we know, we're just saying that we know that an odd number. I don't think we're going to do that. We just know that two k and then time they play and they go back to the time and get So you can write two k times one. Oh, I see. So you can change the integer. Yeah, so you make up a team with that. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex position, and a defense. But now you're saying n squared is yeah. the square of an odd number, and that's really what you're trying to show. What you could have done is square n squared equals 2k plus 1, or k is an integer. That would be a valid statement, since we're claiming n squared is odd. But after this week, I'm going to be like, yeah, because yeah, you can work with that, but I try that, and then I think you'll end up having to do an indirect proof. But try this and see see where it gets you. Is this working? Maybe you should carry a question. Say again? Maybe you should get three shaving grounds. 
Are going to run into the same problem? Oh, wait, in square <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That is 2K. <laughs> It wouldn't be too scary. Oh, wait. It's no longer a greenhouse. It's a big So, what's the reason? We're trying to prove that in the future, we have a proving, right? Square. Start with a contradiction. Seven we can start off with assuming that was equal. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 This is from uh, uh, I'm going off of what we did in the class. We did the, if n squared is equal to n, but if it's a contradiction, we're trying to root it all squared in that. Uh, there, so we're in the treasure, we keep our first one. It's just yeah. the odd that equals odd. So instead of trying to prove it's small, you're trying to prove it. It tastes like chicken with a little cheese. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, we're trying to prove it. Uh, I'm just saying, you're going to down and square. That's the original. That's the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. All right. So you're going to assume n is even. Okay, cool. So n equals 2k. Okay. I would call it an assumption instead of a hypothesis. Because hypotheses are true. Right? And this is something we're just assuming. And it's going to get us to a contradiction. All right, good. So n squared equals 2k plus 1. Um, because n squared is odd, so that's that's a hypothesis. It's also a proposition, but in particular, it's a hypothesis. Okay, um, so so how do you get two k equals two k plus one? Well, we know we said n is equal to two k, mm -hmm. and we know n squared is equal oh. to two k plus one. Oh no no no! Okay, hold on hold on. Different k's. Right? You said n equal to 2k because it's even. Yeah. Okay, good. 2k is equal to 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 2k is but try, okay, so n is even, um, n squared is 2 times something plus 1, but there's another way you can write n squared, right, um, because you know that n is 2 times k1, if that's true, then n squared equals 2 times k1 squared. So step two, you show that n squared is 2k. No, that's okay. All right, you know that's true because n squared is odd. That's a hypothesis. But using your assumption, you can also show n squared is 2 times k1 quantity squared. All right, and then fill with that. So you've just shown that n squared is twice an integer. Yeah. Right. Therefore, n squared is even, which is a contradiction because you assumed n squared was odd. So there's your contradiction. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, the mechanics are, are right there, right? It's just dotting the i and crossing the t's. Cool. All right, so go on to problem set nine once you're done with that. But C is not necessarily going to be. So two is divided by six, but so this is what it looks like. If it's not divisible by one, that means I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. So we're saying that this is true. 
This is any integer, so K1 is basically our C situation. So how do we prove K1 is C? Or K1 can be any integer.